Good morning, brothers and sisters. I'm Sam McCook from Jamaica. And on behalf of the rest of the Caribbean delegation, we want to express thanks for the hospitality of our Mexican brothers and sisters. And thank you for coming out this morning to join in prayer. I know there are many competing options, but um, prayer is important. Um, to share a reflection from Philippians 4, verses 2 through 9. And I wrestled with what to caption this in the context of praying for the global university. And a simple theme and challenge captured my thoughts. And it is simply this, let the beauty of Jesus be seen. In a world scarred by sin and made ugly by the evil actions of men and women, pursuing their own pleasures and ambitions without regard for others or for the God who made them, there's a desperate need for the beauty of Jesus. A beauty that can reach the worst of sinners, as the writer of this passage described himself. A beauty that can make the most violent opponent of the gospel, such as the writer of this passage was, become its most passionate promoter. A beauty that, can, that caused a scholar academic with extremist tendencies to proudly proclaim to be a fool for Christ, as the writer of this passage did. The power of this passage is not only compelling, not, is not only in its compelling words and irresistible logic, but in the instrument God used to deliver the words. The Apostle Paul was transformed from an unattractive zealot whose very name drove fear into the hearts of believers into a persuasive and inspirational messenger of the gospel, one who brought the beauty of Jesus to a world enslaved by heathenic philosophies, empty religions, and corrupt lifestyles, a world very much like the world in which we live today. He wrote to a people who had been touched by the beauty of Jesus, whose actions had brought joy and encouragement to an enslaved Paul, reminding him of the beauty of Christian fellowship, the time when many were corrupting the beautiful message by their selfish ambitions and insincerity. He challenged them, as he challenges us thousands of years later, that they should allow the beauty of Jesus, the perfect Son of God, and the incarnation of love to be seen in them. Let it be seen in our lives, our families, our groups, our churches, our communities, our countries, our region, or world. This week we have been given a glimpse of that beauty. As we set aside our differences where they may have existed, differences of language, race, color, worship style, doctrinal idiosyncrasies, political persuasions, football teams, music genres, and food preferences, we have been caught up in a multilingual multicultural celebration of the beauty of Jesus, the beauty of his redeemed people, and the beauty of sharing in his mission. The passage starts with an appeal to two faithful Christian workers who were separated by a conflict, a conflict that pained Paul to the point of his pleading to them to find agreement in the Lord. But it was not just left up to them. They were to be helped by his true companion, Conflicts and disagreements among the followers of Christ have been the greatest beauty robbers of the gospel message. They are the virus that corrupts and disables the operating system of our groups, fellowships, and ministries. They hide the beauty of Jesus from those who are desperately searching for his beauty on our campuses, workplaces, and communities. He told them, as he tells us today, 
agree with each other in the Lord. Let the beauty of Christian harmony be seen in us. Imprisoned and in chains, robbed of his freedom, separated from the warmth of fellowship and the close support of other believers, Paul could be excused if he used the occasion to gripe and complain. But there is no evidence that he did. He had an irrepre irrepressible joy that neither prison, chains, nor an uncertain future could suppress. His call to rejoice is therefore not the empty words of a religious lightweight, but of someone who had test, been tested and had declared that all things work together for good. His words rever reverberated from the walls of his prison cell, rejoice evermore, and again I say, rejoice. He told them, as he tells us today, rejoice always, and again I say, rejoice. Let the beauty of Christian joy be seen in us. Anxiety is a condition that has been a part of the human experience from the beginning of time. And Christians, even the most saintly, are not spared from its attack. But Paul, who had more than his fair share of life-threatening experiences and anxious moments, had discovered a powerful antidote to anxiety, prayer his prescription for every situation. Prayer leads to the peace that is beyond understanding, the peace that guards the heart and guards the mind. In a world of anxious people, drowning their anxieties with alcohol, medication, pleasure, and godless spirituality, there has never been a greater need for this peace. He told them then, as he tells us today, in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Let the beauty of Christian prayer be seen in us. One of the most powerful evidences in support of the Christian gospel is transformed lives. All of us as Christians are people with a past. Paul listed the former lives of the early Christians in 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 11, it reads like a rogue's gallery, but they had been transformed into new creatures. They lived holy lives that stood in stark contrast to the sinful norms of the time. He presented his life as a model and instructed them to put into practice the lessons he had taught and demonstrated. Today, the beauty of the gospel has been seriously blemished by high-profile scandals involving Christians. But this is further aggravated by the inconsistencies and hypocrisy of so many believers whose lifestyles are a daily denial of the transforming power of Jesus Christ. He told them then, as he tells us today, whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. Let the beauty of Christian transformation be seen in us. Paul ends this portion by saying to those who had practiced what he had taught, the peace of God will be with you. In a world of violence, war, conflict, strife, pain, and anxiety, this is not a promise to ignore. This is a world that desperately needs to see the beauty of Jesus. There's a little chorus that we sang as students. It's a chorus that is both a challenge, a prayer, and an expression of our power. It says, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. All his wondrous compassion and purity. O oh, thou spirit divine, all my nature refine till the beauty of Jesus be seen in me. God bless you.